What is going on guys? David aka Recon Jack here, your coach of the Sea State 21s, bringing you guys my red season 4 draft analysis. I'm pretty excited to still be bringing you this content. Wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to participate this season due to other commitments, but here we are. And we're going to hop right into this and what better way to start my first Gen 7 draft with a Gen 7 Mon. And with the first pick of the draft, I chose to grab Tapu Koko. Now Tapu Koko as most of you should know by now, is one of the Guardians of Alola, an electric and fairy type Mon, with an immunity to dragon and a plethora of resistances, which is only weak to poison and ground. Tapu Koko has the Electric Surge ability, which summons up electric terrain for 5 turns, in which electric moves do 50% more damage and grounded Pokemon cannot be put to sleep, which is actually pretty useful in League format because it is immune to moves like Yawn, Sleep Powder, and Spore. Uh, Tapu Koko's most notable stat is its blistering 130 base speed, which allows it to outspeed most premier threats in the meta. Uh, it also has a pretty versatile move pool and can hit on both the physical and special side with base 115 attack and 95 attack. Now there's many different sets that this mon can run. Obviously it makes a great pivot option with access to both Volt Switch, which is powered up by the electric terrain, as well as U-Turn, which can be used as a pivot on uh, electric immunities. Another notable move that Coco can run is Taunt, which can prevent hazards and other utility moves like phasing, recovery, and setup. A Calm Mind Roostet is yet another possibility for this thing, and with that Blitz speed stat running, Running something like this could prove to be quite the threat, especially once my opponent's mons have been whittled down a bit. Uh, Tabu Koko is our first of two Z move eligible mons. Uh, some notable moves here would be Flanium Z with Mirror Move, which uh, raises its attack, otherwise, this Pokemon would otherwise be unable to increase its physical attack stat. Uh, Flanium Z with Brave Bird, which allows it to break through uh, grass types and Tapunium, I think I'm pronouncing that, Tapunium Z, with Nature's Madness, which gets off 75% on any opposing Pokemon. Uh, Tabu Koko also has Grass Knot and HP Ice in its arsenal to break through uh, those bulky grounds, which would otherwise be a check to, to this mod. Our next pick is something that has been around since Gen 2, and I'm on I've always wanted to use but have never had the chance, and I'm proud to announce that that Pokemon is Scizor. Now, Scissor has great overall bulk and a great ability in Technician, paired along with a powerful base 130 attack stat. This is something I've had my eyes on the moment I figured out I'd be able to participate this season, and had it not, and had this not been my very first Gen 7 draft, I think Scissor would have been my round 1 pick. With Fairy types taking over this generation, Scissor's stab, Technician boosted, priority bullet punch, is going to be taking even more lives than usual. It makes a great setup Mon with access to Sword Stance as well as reliable recovery in Roost and has some solid utility moves like Knock Off and Defog which are two invaluable moves in the anti-team format. Scizor also forms an incredible Volt, volt Turn Core with Tapu Koko and already the momentum is real for my team. One more key note is that it is immune to poison moves that threaten out Coco and can also tank most ground moves. With Scissor's only weakness being fire, I knew I had to pick up a good fire resist so I hopped down to tier 2 and grabbed a Pokemon which, up until last generation, was my favorite since I started playing in Gen 1, and that is the legendary Pokemon, Arcanine. Now Arcanine has two amazing abilities in Flash Fire, which absorbs those fire type attacks, as well as Intimidate, which is great for stopping opposing physical threats. This is, in my opinion, one of the best draftable fire types, because it can fulfill both the role of an offensive mon as well as a defensive mon. Now you all know that I love my hyper offense, and Arcanine certainly fits the bill with a move pool including Stab Flare Blitz, Wild Charge to break through bulky waters, Close Combat, which most notable for this mon hits a lot of thick fat users super effectively, and Priority Extreme Speed. It can even run a specially offensive set with an above average special attack stat or a mixed set to break through certain wall combinations. Now of course, Arcanine also makes a pretty good physical wall itself with the right ability, EV investment, and moves like Will-O-Wisp and Morning Sun. Speaking of thick fat Pokemon, my round 4 pick was the Moo Moo Milk Get Rich Quick Scheme Provider, Miltank. 
This is another Pokemon that has always seemed to elude me in every draft I've participated in, so I decided to delve into Tier 4 a bit early and pick what I believe to be a Valumon. All of Miltank's abilities are useful, and in an anti-team format it's even better than usual because I can use Miltank to counter one or two specific mons that would otherwise give me trouble. Having a wall like this is incredible because of its base 100 speed, which means certain wall breakers will have to run even more EVs in speed and or an undesired nature to make sure they're outspeeding something that wants to take hits. Motank is my first hazard setter with access to stealth rock, as well as my first cleric with access to heal bell. Other notable moves for this Pokemon are Milk Drink and Thunder Wave. Everything else I have to say about Miltank can be summed up with this. Be careful for the week where I bring a surprise offensive set. Next up we have Nidoking, the very first Pokemon I ever did a legit speed speed run playthrough with. Some people prefer Nidoqueen for its bulk, but I find that in draft format, Nidoqueen just doesn't have a good enough speed tier and is outpaced by a lot of mons that outright KO it. I'm willing to give up that bulk to grab this incredibly offensive mon, which can also set up rocks if need be. Nidoking has the ground typing, which is a necessity in the format to prevent Volt Switch spam, and a useful poison typing that makes it another fairy threat on my team. This Pokemon has an incredible move pool on both the physical and special side, and with the ability Sheer Force, it immediately becomes that much more of a threat, even more so when holding a Life Orb. But don't get too comfortable knowing that this, as Nidoking's speed stat of 85, coupled with its amazing offensive ability, makes it an incredible Choice Scarf candidate. When it's not rocking the Choice Scarf, Nidoking still has Sucker Punch to make sure it gets off some big damage first. The mind games can be real with this Pokemon because it doesn't take Life Orb recoil damage from moves with a secondary effect, which can make it hard for the opponent to guess what item it has in a lot of scenarios. After Nidoking, I decided to grab Greninja, my favorite starter Pokemon and the last of my tier 2 picks. Greninja is the definition of a glass cannon, poor defense, with an amazing speed stat of 122 and an above average special attack stat, along with the usable physical attack. Unfortunately, two of its abilities, Protean and Battle Bond, are banned in this league, which may turn people off to this Pokemon, but even without those, I still think that this is a quality pick. Now, Greninja isn't the bulky Pokemon that most people look for in a water type, and in fact it fills a very different role. Greninja can set up both regular and toxic spikes, which means that aside from sticky webs, I now have the ability to stack every entry hazard, and with that awesome speed, I'm almost guaranteed to get at least one layer up. Greninja is another Pokemon with an incredible move pool on both the special and physical side, and with Water Shuriken becoming a specially offensive move this gen, Greninja now has stat priority on its stronger side. This actually makes a great choice spec set, incredibly threatening, which Greninja can abuse with powerful moves like Stab, Hydro Pump, and Dark Pulse. Greninja also has U-Turn to fall back on to build momentum in case of an unfavorable matchup, adding another speedy member to the Voltorn core that I have. One last thing worth mentioning is that this gives me an immunity to powerful psychic types, which makes opponents think twice before choosing their moves. Next up we have Decidueye, another Gen 7 mon that I am very excited to use. I think Decidueye is a very underrated Pokemon and its true abilities will shine in Anti-Team. Decidueye rocks the Ghost Grass typing which pairs incredibly well with Greninja and Miltank and is a ground resist which we were kind of hurting for up until this point. Uh, Decidueye bo boasts above average bulk and physical attack although its speed leaves a bit to be desired. It has a great utility set with Defog and Roost, something I can remove hazards and scout with, and even stall with if necessary. This is yet another Pokemon on my team that can be run defensively as well as offensively. With boosting moves like Sword Stance and Nasty Plot, its bulk allows it to set up semi-reliably and then recover off any damage that was taken the previous turn. It can also pass these boosts with Baton Pass, which is, which, like, it's insane to have that option, especially with Pokemon like Coco, Scizor, Greninja, and Nidoking, who already have an overwhelming offensive presence. As if I didn't have enough priority already, this Mon gets Sucker Punch and has a nasty trick up its sleeve, the signature move Spirit Shackle, which traps the opponent's Pokemon. This can be super helpful in gaining momentum in other situations such as Toxic Stalling, something to death. Going along with the theme of momentum, Decidueye is yet another Pokemon with U-Turn, so that and Baton Pass just add more to my choices in battle. 
All right, we're going back to the sandbox for this next pick, the pseudo-legendary Dragonite, which is the last of my tier 1 selections. Dragonite speaks for itself, really, since the beginning of Pokemon, it has always been a huge threat. It has great overall stats, in particular a huge base attack set of 134, and an excellent defensive ability in multi-scale, which gives it a far easier time setting up and can even be used to stop setup sweepers. Its vast move pool and stat distribution means that it can pull off a variety of sets effectively, being able to function as a wall breaker or a late game sweeper, and can even run defensive sets, making it unpredictable. Dragonite is our second and final Z move eligible mod, which alongside Dragon Dance turns it into a lethal sweeper, boosting its already excellent attack and improving its speed. It has coverage moves to hit all Dragon Resist super effectively, and with the right Z move, Dragonite can straight up sweep teams. Other moves like Extreme Speed, Roost, and Thunder Wave add to Dragonite's options, and with the addition of Z moves this gen, Dragonite can really get its special side on. With moves like Blizzard, Fire Blast, and Thunder, it no longer has to worry about burns or an Intimidate to get off big damage. What really sealed the deal for me with this pick was Dragonite being a ground immunity, something my team could really use. Up next we're staying in Gen 1 with Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee is a big presence thanks to its solid base 120 attack stat and the great combination of Reckless and High Jump Kick, as well as a bunch of cool moves including Knock Off and Rapid Spin, which make it a great wall breaker and partner for Stealth Rock weak Pokemon. Hitmonlee also has another useful ability in Unburden, which makes it a formidable late game sweeper. Fighting types are always great to have, and with priority in Mog Punch and Sucker Punch, it's almost guaranteed to pick off weakened Mons and break Sashes. Hitmonlee is kind of one, a one-dimensional Mon, but the one job it does, it does really well, and sometimes it's all you need to make it great. The main reason I picked this was for that Rapid Spin option. Up until this point, all I had was Defog, but now I can remove Hazards on my side while keeping up whatever Hazards I've managed to stack. Coming to the end of our draft here, we dive headfirst into tier 5 and come up with Meowstic. I really wanted something useful out of the tier and I had a few options, but this stood out to me due to its ability prankster. With 104 base speed, Meowstic will always, almost always get off its supporting moves, most importantly to me being light screen and reflect. This Pokemon is also great at disrupting my opponent with moves like Trick, Thunder Wave, and Yawn. It also has Magic Coat, which will be useful when facing a Sticky Webs team. Meowstic is also another Cleric option with Heal Bell, and can disrupt weather teams with options like Rain Dance and Sunny Day, and can even set up Trick Room for threats like my, my Scizor. Something I'm very excited to use is Prankster Gravity, which supports Nido King incredibly well. Meowstic doesn't have to be a support mon, with access to Calm Mind Prankster, it has priority setup and a very good move pull to hit most things for super effective damage and being a psychic type doesn't hurt either. Its other ability, Infiltrator, can also be used on an offensive set to hit behind pesky substitutes. This is a tier 5 mon that I actually think will help my team immensely. I'm pretty excited to see what it can do. And we're gonna wrap things up here with my final pick and my Mega Pokemon, Mega Glalie. This wasn't my first choice of Megas, but the more I look at it, the more I love it. Mega Glalie gains an amazing ability in Refrigerate and high offensive stats when it Mega Evolves, becoming a potent wall breaker that is able to destroy defensive cores, as well as a solid speed tier. Mega Glalie also offers utility with spikes, which means that even if it may be walled, it will not be useless. Furthermore, Mega Glalie has access to a very important priority move in Ice Shard, which allows it to revenge kill faster threats. Double Edge is an extremely powerful stat move when boosted by Refrigerate, being able to dent many Pokemon that do not resist ice, and I can use Return for a safer stab if the recoil from Double Edge is unfavorable for the match. Freeze Dry can also be used to hit bulky water types that would otherwise be able to wall and severely weaken Mega Glalie, and Spikes can be used to capitalize on the switches that Mega Glalie forces by using the few Pokemon that can stomach its attacks as Spike Spade. Earthquake has great complementary coverage, being able to smash Steel and Fire types that can take Mega Glalie's stab attacks with ease. Explosion is an alternative in the last slot to heavily damage a Pokemon after Mega Glalie has done its job. And that is going to be your Red Season 4 Sea State 21's team. I'm really excited to be participating in my first Gen 7 draft, and there's a lot of things I've never used on my team, so I'm eager to see what all I can do with this. I'm really loving the cores I have, 
and a lot of different options, I think it's going to be really fun. Most of the teams in our division are looking pretty scary, but I think we'll be able to handle them, and maybe, hopefully this season will be our time to take home the championship. I hope you guys are just as excited for this season. I'll talk to you guys later, and until then, peace!